Hi, and welcome to another live stream. <laughs> um, it's been a while since I've been on the live stream, and there's two reasons for that. One, I was doing some very serious healing work, and two, because my neighbours, as you can probably hear in the background, have been making a lot of noise, banging, building, and playing their radios. So, yeah. Um, my neighbours, when I first moved to this neighbourhood, um, I was a, kind of advised not to buy, not to buy in this area because it's pretty obvious as soon as you arrive here that there's very little regard for nature. People throw their rubbish all over the ground and leave it for the council to come and clean up. They, a lot of them drink and take drugs and I hear a lot of rockers at night, especially on weekends. And I've had to often call the police um, because of domestic violence and drug abuse. So it's not the best area, but obviously you can get a nice big house <laughs> for about half the price compared to what you would get in a nice trendy area. So, um, when I first got to this house, the garden was a tip. I mean, the guy who lived here before, he used to just, must have just thrown rubbish out the window. There was every, every kind of rubbish you can imagine, from bottles to lighters and crisp packets and random pieces of machinery. And it was an absolute mess. But the good news is that in five years, I've managed to cultivate a decent amount of wildlife in my garden. And I had the pleasure yesterday of having a very close encounter with a sparrow hawk in my garden. Um, and I just wish I'd had my video because it was just such a beautiful sight. And that's because I've managed to create an environment in my garden for the sparrows and other little birds in which they are absolutely thriving. I have at least three or four nesting um, couples of sparrows. They have plenty of food and water and I've planted trees and bushes and places for them to hang out. So it's really great to watch my garden become an oasis for wildlife whilst my neighbor's gardens <laughs> are like concrete jungles in comparison um, and it just shows you that you know you don't have to have a fancy house on a hill in the countryside with rolling landscapes and gardens to have plenty of wildlife in your garden. So I think I have at least 30 species of creatures in my pond, which is things like frogs, newts, shrimps, um, bloodworms, and all those interesting things. And those attract other species, which attract the birds, and so the cycle goes. If you've just joined me, um, welcome. I'm going to be talking about, well, first my new painting here and um, the acrylic pouring technique that I used. Um, I've been playing with some acrylic pouring on old CDs. It's when you, um, you mix acrylic paint with a pouring medium and then when you pour the colours on, instead of blending, they make these very cool, very cool effects. Um, so I've been playing with that and teaching my students. I have a couple of little students that come and learn with me, which is lovely, and um, been teaching them the, the, the simplicity and the beauty of acrylic pouring. So some of these were done by me and some of them were done by my students, but I've got a whole whole pile here of old CD. So that's been the, the playful fun that I've been having lately with acrylic pouring, which resulted in this, the, um, the walking into the light painting. 
I wanted to talk a little bit about how I came to um, resolve the, the issues that I was going through prior to this painting, the, 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 the difficult times, the confusion and the just generally feeling um, very tired and weighed down by life. And I want to say that one of the biggest contributing factors to my healing was Cambo. There's a stick of Cambo. You don't know what Cambo is. Now Cambo is an excretion from um, a tree frog in Brazil. And my friend Nikki, who I mentioned on my YouTube channel, um, she, she did her ayahuasca and some of her training um, with the shamans there. And when she came back, she brought with her some cambo and harpe and sananga. And uh, so I'd never heard of cambo before and probably wouldn't have shown any interest in um, having some frog excretion put into my skin. <laughs> I mean, why would you, right? But there's actually a very, very good reason why you would want to put Cambo on your skin. And um, it took me a while to to realize the, the healing benefits of it. It's more about the fact that trauma gets stored in the body and we generally don't have any way to release the trauma that is actually stuck in our bodies. So whenever we experience something traumatic, and this can go right back to infancy, um, that trauma can get lodged energetically within our bodies. And then whenever we're facing a si similar situation, those um, fight or flight feelings get re-triggered within our bodies. And we experience things like shallow breathing, um, heart palpitations, sweating, and so on. Um, and, you know, for years I've been studying therapies and healing modalities and alternative therapies, etc, etc. Um, and whilst all of them have something to contribute, especially art therapy, <laughs> I'm not biased, but yeah, especially art therapy has a lot to contribute, there's still the issue of having those memories traumatically sort of lodged within our bodies and you know not being able to have a physical release it's about the physical release so if you've ever heard of something called somatic experiencing by Dr. Levine or if you've ever read the book the body keeps the score you will know what I'm talking about the trauma is locked in the body and needs to find a way out. And the only way that we can bring that trauma out for healing is to, to trigger it, to get it out ourselves. So that is what Cambo does, because when you have the Cambo in your body, your body starts a process of trying to sort itself out and um, for me so it's going to be different for everybody but for me once the cambo was in my system I experienced a lot of shaking and feelings of nausea and general discomfort and this is a good thing because when we experience trauma we usually just try to get over it and get on with life and carry on as normal now, if you think about a prey animal, such as a rabbit or a, any, any prey animal, when they have a near miss, so say, um, say a sparrow hawk tries to take a rabbit, that rabbit might escape. But instead of becoming traumatized, what the prey animal does is to shake off the experience. So the body goes very naturally into spasms and, and shivering and, you know, they don't, they don't hold back and say, oh, I've got to keep it together and look strong because the other rabbits will think I'm weak. 
they just go naturally through the process of shaking off their trauma. And the thing is that we as humans, we're so intellectualized, we're so, you know, used to suppression and um, coping mechanisms that instead of shaking off our trauma, we end up doing things like drinking, smoking, uh, self-sabotage in whatever form that may take, overeating, you know, there's so many ways that humans end up coping with trauma and stress that are, are completely unnecessary if we were to experience and shake off the trauma first time around. But unfortunately, you know, for most of us, our minds are much stronger than our instincts. And so, you know, we can, we can tell ourselves, for example, if you get on a stage and and you see that sea of eyes looking up at you and and you feel that terror you know we can tell ourselves that okay you know i'm stronger than this i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give in to those feelings and so in that in that moment that actually serves you because then you're able to do your performance or your play or whatever it is and you you feel you feel fine after but actually you're not fine because those fight or flight um, and adrenaline and cortisol hormones are still in your body and you haven't had a way to release any of it so you might feel the next day um, completely burned out or exhausted or ill and then you may experience other things like wanting to withdraw from society and you know that the, the mind starts getting very active then and, and persuading you that going on stage is not a good idea <laughs> because that trauma is still locked in the body. What happens with Cambo is that when you, when you take the Cambo your body naturally purges, not just of the, to well, it's not toxins, but whatever is in the frog's um, skin, there's something that the frog excretes that's, you know, extracted and it's put on this stick. So your body goes into a process where it is eliminating the, the frog's excretion from your body but um, what it does in the process of that elimination is it helps you to eliminate other toxins or traumatic experiences that are locked inside your body. So I would highly recommend um, if anyone's interested in somatic experiencing or these types of approaches like um, Cambo, Ayahuasca and alternative forms of healing it's definitely worth exploring because, you know, obviously in Western society, generally speaking, I think people are becoming more open-minded now, but generally speaking, we are over-medicated, overworked, underpaid, <laughs> and basically putting up with a lot of stress and trauma that is not really necessary. If we knew the means to heal ourselves and come back into a place of balance. So I've said basically what I wanted to say and if you have questions about you know healing or how to get rid of trauma in the body feel free to contact me and and we can talk. So yeah that is how I came to this great place right here. Thanks for watching.